What up, players? It's War Boss Tail for this mug. Welcome to the War Boss Chop Shop, where we try to find interesting, creative, and awesome ways of utilizing the bits in our bits boxes to make our hobby dollars stretch more than they normally would. Today, I'm going to show you my discoveries of using Great Swords bits that you get in the Great Sword bits or in the Great Sword kit to make new Great Swords. Great Swordsman out of State Trooper bodies. So I've got a box of State Troopers that I that I popped open and clipped out. And you'll notice from looking at this uh, box art that the the State Troopers only some of them have really distinctive looking armor. And what I mean by that on the front is Champions got some armored knee protectors, but most of these guys just are wearing like tights, manly men. They're men in tights, and they've a lot of them have breastplates, but some of them do not. When you look at them on the back, some of them have just the, their colored shirts, or some of them have this dark brown, well you can't really see it, but this dark brown leather jerkin, and here's another guy with just the, his uniform. So the great swordsmen are known for being armored. Very heavily armored. Let me show you this one guy here. You can't really tell what his what his breastplate looks like because his arms are held over. But he's got a breastplate and they've got two... I don't even know what these are called. Thigh coverings. You can see on the back that the, the breastplate connects there. So... Oh, here. Let's take a look at this chappy right there. This one's got a breastplate with a sash over it and those thigh car covers. The problem is that none of the state trooper bodies have thigh covers. They have massive cod pieces. Some of them have breastplates, but this is one model that you couldn't use for a great sword because it doesn't have a breastplate and none of them, like I said, have thigh armor. We'll just call it leg armor from now on because thigh flaps and leg thigh armor just sound weird. Here's another one that has a leather the leather jerkin over the front, but again, no real armor, even on the back it's got the leather, so... So, and this guy, this first guy I showed you has nothing on the back, it's just his jerkin. So I'm gonna show you a couple more guys, here's one with a uniform and like a scroll or parchment pinned on the front. And... Are there any more? Yeah, so there are three that just have no armor whatsoever. And you've got this guy, who has the armored breastplate of the, with the twin-tailed comet, on it, but he's not wearing one shoe. His right foot is completely barefoot. Oh, and his left too, I think. Or is that a sock? Nope, there, it looks like he's supposed to be barefoot. Or he's wearing like a sock on his left foot, because you can't really see the toe details, but you can really tell that these are toes on his right foot. So I don't know what that's supposed to be. But I found three, I found three guys that do have armored, that do have armor. This one's got some, I think this is the champion model because it's got leg armor here. And he does have a breastplate. I found another guy with a really ornate looking breastplate here with with in, engraving Carl Franz KF and, and engraving down there at the bottom. Here's a third guy I found. And here are my experiments. These are the guys I experimented with. The, the thing is, you can't really tell that they're wearing armor anyway because they have their, their swords come right across their body. A lot of them do. So you have to match the arms with the correct sleeves because this uh, I, I didn't realize this, but the sleeves are all different. You've got some poofy sleeved guys that have kind of elastic bands or tuck them in under, underneath and they create two little folds of poofy sleeves. You've got these long ones over here with no no bands, so just long sleeve. And you've got one with three, like try div divided up into into three sections. So what what I did with this guy was I mixed and matched because you can't really tell. Hopefully you won't be able to tell, but all, all you're really going to be seeing once the model is all painted up is the breastplate and the leg armor. Compare that to a regular great swordsman. You can kind of see the breastplate peeking out, but what you are mostly going to see for all the great swords, unfortunately, are these leg armor plates. So how do we go about 
actually utilizing these. Let me show you what I do. First, do not glue the body to the base, the 20 millimeter base. That is going to limit you when it's time to do the posing and then it'll, it'll make it harder for you to rank them up. Because you're allowed to base or glue them any facing you want on this base, it's, 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 it's gonna be a little bit easier for you to make sure that you know how to do it correctly. Now, you're going to have a lot of these arms where it looks like the sword is tucked underneath and it's a long sleeve uh, unbroken so it's not it's not divided up it's just one long poofy sleeve unfortunately these are meant for the swords to be hanging down so if if i could have done this whole thing again i would have put more of these sleeves hanging down uh, i would have used more of these swords men arms instead of these ones because unfortunately with these long sleeves there is not enough room because there's so much junk accoutrements on this on on every single body that there's no way for you to be able to fit them correctly and i found that for all of these because they've got daggers they've got little doodads they've got skulls and bottles and 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 all sorts of stuff so unfortunately these are all out unless you're willing to shave down your state trooper state troopers torsos for your one two three four five six six eligible bodies for your for your for your extra great swords troops so remember what i'm looking for are leg armor down at the bottom because the champion and some of the command guys have leg armor such as this guy with this segmented sections kind of look like samurai armor plates on the bottom or on his legs and also we're looking for a breastplate if if the guy does not have one, if he's wearing just a uniform or a jerkin, we're going to put those to the side for now and maybe we'll use them later if we have enough arms. I, d I don't think we do. No, I think we... I think you're only going to have enough extra arms to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extra great swordsmen. And then you have three state trooper bodies left over. This is assuming you go with the full kit. Now what you could do is just buy a bunch of state trooper bodies off of eBay bit sellers, beg them from your friend who plays Empire and has some boxes lying around, uh, trade him some of the new Space Marine stuff or whatever you have in your collection and, and you can get some, some good mileage out of your, out of your great source kit. So, so let me show you how we're going to do this. First, we're going to pair up an arm. An, uh, a pair of arms, rather. So some some of the great swordsmen have these armored left sleeves, and some of them have poofs. Now I've used most of the poofs in order to find out where I, I need to be putting my stuff, but I've got one last non-armored poofy sleeve arm. So I'll, I'll show this example with that one. And let's begin. I'm using, as always, I'm using liquid cement from Model Master for plastic models. Great for or any kind of plastic work. And uh, I have, of course, cleaned off and shaven off any mold lines that I have. So this arm tucks right into the torso, which means it's gonna be difficult to find an arm that matches, that matches it. Like this arm, for example, the sword is meant to be held out, so it's, it doesn't match up. Oh, I hope there, there is one that matches up. It's supposed to match to those, the long poofy sleeve arms that do not fit. Um, we'll see. Yeah, it looks like this arm is the one left arm that is a no-go. Because all of these arms that I'm testing out look like they are meant for the corresponding sleeve. And if that is true, and that puts us into a bit of a pickle. I love pickles! Alright, so that means unfortunately we're not going to be able to use this arm unless we find an arm or a torso where we can kind of finagle this uh, this, this, this greatsword arm onto. So let's go look in. This one has a skull, it sticks out, so it's going to be a little bit hard to, to work with. This one that I'm pulling for us to use might work. 
but in the back it's got an, an extra dagger so so he's got like two extra daggers there so that won't work so the last option uh, is this guy who's got a parchment hanging down and some some flaps of of parchment there so I'm gonna take this poofy sleeve arm with the sword we'll call it the at rest arm and I'll, I'm gonna dry fit it to see if it'll fit yep once I get rid of these two ribbons there should fit pretty nicely so I'm gonna commit to shaving down the ribbons on this torso and actually I should go with a clipper a pair of clippers safety first so a little bit of conversion work here I'm just clipping down the excess ribbon uh, parchment ribbon and then I'm going to use my hobby knife to shave down that area because we need this spot in order to use the poofy sleeve sword at rest arm so let's apply the plastic cement cross our fingers that the conversion gods are with us and put the at rest arm right there oops the thing is these were meant for the great swords because the great swords a lot of their legs are make it look like they're marching implacably forward not really running or, or posing or, or spread eagled and a lot of these state trooper poses are pretty open like that right now we're gonna find the other arm that we un so unceremoniously ripped off of the other state trooper torso and we're gonna apply it so there we go it matches it fits it worked it worked for this particular figure because we were able to shave off the area where this long at rest arm is what well, would be taking up room with these other guys that I'm able to use because of their breastplates unfortunately wouldn't be able to do that because of the skull there the excess bits here that I would have to shave off it might be harder to to clean that up so for a beginner you want to just find the torsos where you can the the state trooper bodies rather than just the torsos where you can can put that on so now that I've done that I would glue him to the base the direction that I want him to be facing now you can see really where he should be facing in order to match the other great swords in your unit if I glue the body on like this his sword would be at a different angle than everybody else because he'd be leaning forward in a different way than everybody else this is why we don't glue our bodies to the base before we've glued the arms to the state troopers in this case I'm going to show you the other three that I was able to build Here's a state trooper walking forward. He had a breastplate, so I chose him. Here's guy uh, number two. Again, we've seen him before, the samurai armor with the plates on his leg. And here's trooper slash greatsword number three. So now I'm going to slap some glue on the soles of his feet put him onto his base so that he the sword angle matches the rest of his unit and then I have the rest of my great swords unit here lined up they've got their swords pointed up straight if anything leaning a little bit to the right and we're just going to add him to the chorus line one single double-handed sword all right, and I've got my bits box nearby with all of the heads for our great swords. That's another thing. If you want to use a state trooper head for your great swords, you can do that too. But great swords, great swords are known for them beards and their poofy feathery hats. So I could put this gentleman here. He's got a big poofy feather that goes all down his back. And we could put it on, and it'll look very nice and very fitting in a great swords unit however I think I'm gonna go with somebody else in this case yeah 
let's go with this guy. The thing with, with doing these kinds of conversions where you're going to have to shave off the sides of your torsos, your bodies, is that you always want to make sure your hobby knife is sharp and straight and that you never apply lots of pressure when bringing the knife in towards you. A lot of people say you shouldn't cut towards you in the first place. I've been modeling for a long, long time, so I feel pretty comfortable with the amount of pressure I can put on my knife so that it doesn't gouge out my thumb. But nerve damage, permanent nerve damage, a lot of bad uh, hazardous things can happen if you are not careful. So please, if you can, shave away from yourself or if you're going to shave towards yourself, be safe. And there is our <laughs> Great sword wannabe. So when you stack them up next to a regular great swordsman, they're not too different. Not too different. The thing that you will notice when you've got them both painted up is that they both have poofy sleeves, great swords held up at an angle, leaning slightly to the right, and uh, with a good paint job, should be fine. So you should have enough pieces, like I said, to make seven extra great swordsmen out of your state trooper torsos. Hope you guys found this little chop shop episode interesting. It's been a long one. It's a long chop shop episode because I actually take you through the whole process. But like I said, I hope you guys found it interesting, entertaining, and rewarding for any any kind of conversions you want to do in the future. As I sign off, I want to say that the Empire range of plastic miniatures is great, and that you can interchange a lot of bits, just about everything in the Empire range can be switched around and, and traded with each other. Like the, uh, like the Orc range for Warhammer 40K or even Fantasy. Or, or many of the races now, you can swap heads, you can swap weapons, arms and torsos and, and everything and it will not look out of place. That's the great value of having some state trooper bodies and using the extra great swords arms. What does it mean for your state troopers? It means you're going to have less halberdiers or swordsmen in that unit, in that detachment or parent unit. But some people would say it's a small price to pay, small price to pay, as opposed to shelling out another hundred tacos for getting a new box of great swords. What do you guys think? Leave a comment and. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, blah, 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 blah. Also, I'm interested to know what is your favorite head swap or weapon swap conversion from two different kits? Like I'm using great swords and state troopers. Have you found one that works for you that you really like? Everybody is always interested in, in hearing about what parts and what kits you use. And uh, it's, a, it's kind of like a hobby, hobby connoisseur's uh, pride to be able to say, oh, I recognize that that is from this kit oh and the body is from this kit you can sound kind of snobby if you can name all of the pieces but everybody will uh, give you lots of street cred mad props all right i'm out latest player